I sing to God my Savior, you have looked upon your servants, you have visited your people, and holy is your name through all generations. Everlasting is your mercy to the people you have chosen, and holy is your name. I am lowly as a child, but I know from this day forward that my name will be remembered for all will call me blessed and holy is your name through all generations everlasting is your mercy how the people you have chosen and holy is your name. I proclaim the power of God. You do marvels for your servants, though you scatter the proud hearted and destroy the might of princes, and holy is your name. Through all generations, everlasting is your mercy to the people you have chosen, and holy is your name. To the hungry you give food, send the rich away empty. In your mercy you are mindful of the people you have chosen, and holy is your name. Through all generations, everlasting is your mercy to the people you have chosen, and holy is your name. In your love you now fulfill what you promised to your people. I will praise you, Lord, my Savior. Everlasting is your mercy. And holy is your name. Through all generations, everlasting is your mercy to the people you have chosen, and holy is your name, and holy is your name. This evening before we start Mass, we have a special anniversary tonight for Vincent Anna Landsteiner. So Deacon Steve, their son, is going to give them the anniversary blessing. You may remain seated during the blessing while Deacon Steve and they receive it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
the grace and peace of God our Father, who exalted the marriage bond and made it the sign of Christ and his church, be with you. Blessed be the God of all consolation, who has shown us his great mercy. Blessed be God now and forever. Amen. Amen. We have come together to celebrate the anniversary of the marriage of our brother and sister. As we join them in their joy, we join them also in their gratitude. God has set them among us as a sign of his love, and through the years they have remained faithful and have fulfilled their responsibilities as parents. Let us give thanks for all the favors Vincent and Anna Marie have received during their married life. May God keep them in their love for each other so that they may be more and more of one mind and one heart. Lord, increase and consecrate the love with which Vincent and Anna Marie have for one another. The wedding rings they once exchanged are the sign of their fidelity. May they continue to prosper in the grace of the sacrament. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the tender plan of his providence, God, our Almighty Father, has given married love its faithfulness and its fruitfulness, a special significance in the history of salvation. Let us therefore call upon him, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Father, all holy, you have made marriage the great symbol of Christ's love for his church. Bestow on these your servants the fullness of your own love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, all holy, the faithful one, you asked for and respond to fidelity to your covenant. Fill with your blessings your servants who are celebrating their 70th wedding anniversary. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. It is your will that married life should be a lesson in Christian living. Grant that all husbands and wives may be witnesses to the wonders of your son's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God and creator, we bless and praise your name. In the beginning you made man and woman so that they might enter a communion of life and love. You likewise bless the union of Vincent with Anna Marie so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness on them today. Amid the joys and struggles of their life, you have preserved the union between them. Renew their marriage covenant, increase your love in them, and strengthen their bond of peace, so that, surrounded by their children, they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> <laughs> Please stand for our entrance rites.
To you I call, for you will surely heed me, O God. Turn your ear to me, hear my words. Guard me as the apple of your eye, in the shadow of your wings protect me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of God. Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty and sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. The word of the Lord. Let your mercy be on us, O God, as we place our trust in you. Let your mercy be on us, O God, as we place our trust in you. Your words, O oh God, are truth indeed, and all your works are ever faithful. You love justice and right, your compassion fills all creation. Let your mercy be on us, O oh God, as we place our trust in you. See how the eye of God is watching, ever guarding all who wait in hope to deliver them from death and sustain them in time of famine. Let your mercy be on us, O oh God, as we place our trust in you. Exalt you just in the Lord, for praise is the song of the righteous. How happy the people of God, the ones whom God has chosen. 
Let your mercy be on us, O God, as we place our trust in you. Our soul is waiting for God, for God is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O oh God, be upon us, who place our hope in you. Let your mercy be on us, O oh God, as we place our trust in you. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The word of the Lord. Son of Man came to serve and gave his life as a ransom for many. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to him, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared. 
When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. As we approach the end of the liturgical year, we see the mission of Jesus nearing its completion. We heard in Mark's gospel just now a story about James and John and their request to share closely in the glory of Jesus. Of course, this is what we all should want because glory, eternal life in heaven, is what we're all aiming for. It means salvation. In order to set the scene a little better, however, let's go back in Mark, just three verses, and get an idea of the context of their request. Starting in verse 32, we read, They were on the way going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus went ahead of them. They were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. Taking the twelve aside again, he began to tell them what was going to happen to him. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and hand him over to the Gentiles, who will mock him, spit upon him, scourge him, and put him to death. But after three days, he will rise. Imagine now what state of mind Jesus was in. This is a time when he was looking to his closest followers for some support, understanding, comfort. Remember that James and John were two of the inner circle. There were three, Peter, James, and John, and they did a lot of things apart from the other apostles with Jesus. So they were a couple of his closest friends and associates and apostles. They were there with him at the transfiguration. So these were the cream of the crop of the apostles, who, of course, he was training and teaching to lead the church. This is also the third time that Jesus predicts his passion. That's why he said, uh, taking the 12 aside again. Okay, so this is, he not only has said it once, not only twice, but now this is the third time. You would think they would get it, but they don't get it. It's in this setting that James and John make their request. Teacher, we want, to do for you, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, what do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Now it could be that they were all caught up in the thought of the triumphant Messiah, his glorious and triumphal return certainly possible they were still thinking of him, Jesus, as assuming the physical throne of Jerusalem and in Israel, where once again they would experience the golden days of the past, military might and worldly dominance. So their question was centered upon on, uh, on themselves, really, and not on the bitter cup that Jesus just described to them and that he was about to drink. Imagine how disappointed he was with them at that moment. And notice how they asked him. They asked in two parts. They want him to agree to their request even before he knows what it is. It's as if they knew that what they were asking for was too much. Jesus then says, you don't know what you are asking. Jesus knew that to participate in his glory, they must also participate in his suffering. And so he says to them, can you drink? the cup that I drink. Well, the cup is a symbol.
throughout the Old Testament, usually given to the prophets and describing to them their destiny by God. And that destiny almost always includes suffering and pain. And so it is the cup of bitterness, which in a way Jesus was already beginning to experience. And then he says, or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized. We think of a little child being baptized, a new life. But the word baptism means to be immersed in the water and not just dunked, but immersed and held. The whole story of baptism is that this immersion, in this immersion we are drowned in the waters and we might die to our old lives and be brought up out of the waters to live a new life. This bitter cup and this baptism into death was prophesied 600 plus years earlier by the prophet Isaiah when describing the suffering servant. We heard it in our first reading today from Isaiah chapter 53. The Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity and through his suffering, my servant shall justify many and their guilt he shall bear. They answer almost too quickly, we can indicating further that they didn't understand the depth of the meaning. Sure, Lord, no problem. Drink from your cup, no problem. Be baptized, no problem. And so Jesus says, indeed, you shall drink of the cup that I drink, and you shall be baptized in the baptism that I am baptized with. In other words, you will share in my suffering. As to who will sit at my right and to my left, it is not mine to give. Now, before we judge James and John too harshly, let's take a look at the response from the other apostles. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Why? Because they were jealous, probably. They were thinking the same thing, only James and John beat them to the punch. That's an assumption, of course. But perhaps they were also thinking in the same way about the glorious kingdom to come. Jesus summoned them around himself and he said, you know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them. And then this key phrase, but it shall not be so among you. In other words, he didn't say you will not be rulers or leaders. He said you shall not lead in the same way as the Gentiles. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for the many. Brothers and sisters, this is our calling as well. The Word of God teaches us in many places to be prepared for it. From the Old Testament, Sirach chapter 2, My child, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for trials. Be sincere of heart and steadfast, and do not be impetuous in time of adversity. Cling to him, do not leave him, that you may prosper in your last days. Accept whatever happens to you. In periods of humiliation, be patient. For in fire, gold is tested, and the chosen in the crucible of humiliation. Trust in God, and he will help you. Make your ways straight and hope in him. And then further, in the New Testament, from 1 Peter chapter 4, but rejoice to the extent that you share in the sufferings of Christ, so that when his glory is revealed, you may also rejoice exultantly. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. We know that this life includes suffering. Life is really hard sometimes. You may be experiencing suffering in your own life right now. Perhaps you're experiencing financial difficulties or maybe problems with a relationship, a son, a daughter, a spouse, perhaps even a parent. Maybe you suffer from depression, loneliness, or maybe you've recently lost a loved one. Whatever your suffering may be, Remember that the other side of suffering and pain, the other side of the cross and the grave, 
is the resurrection. So what can be done with suffering? One thing that we can do and that we should do is offer it up. From Colossians chapter 1, verse 24, Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ on behalf of his body, which is the church. So we can use our sufferings to help others, to help others to grow in holiness, to help others to get to heaven. We just have to offer it up. So that's one thing we can do. We can pray daily for God's grace and mercy, and we should. We can ask him to take away our suffering, or at least give us the grace to endure it. We must frequent the sacraments. We must keep our temple pure by going to confession so that we may be filled and nourished here at the table of the Lord. We find the rest of the answer in the psalm reading for today. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. For in God our hearts rejoice, in your holy name we trust. Jesus, I trust in you. of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Turning to the Lord, we bring to him our needs and our petitions. For the church, that we may be good stewards of the gifts that God has given us and use our gifts for the good of others, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may see themselves as servant leaders who promote truth and justice for the common good, we pray. Lord, hear our for all married couples, that they continue to live their vocation of love as an example to their families and to the world of God's faithful, fruitful and lasting love, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who serve in the military and in law enforcement, that the Lord will protect them and reward their service to the common good, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all farmers and all who work the land, may they be kept safe and have favorable weather for a bountiful harvest, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sanctity of all life, 
that we may pray for and support the dignity of the unborn, disabled, and elderly, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill and those on our parish prayer list, that God will heal the sick and strengthen all who are caring for them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may enjoy the peace of God's kingdom, especially Emmeline Spitzer and Diane Irwin, who remember at Mass this weekend, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Incline your merciful ear to our prayers, we ask, O Lord, and listen in kindness to the supplications of those who call on you. Through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is 
is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The Son of Man has come to give his life as a ransom for many.
down here and take the body of the Lord and drink with faith the blood for you outpoured. Saved by Christ's blah body and his holy blood, with souls refreshed we give our thanks to God. Draw near, draw near, take the body of our Lord. Draw near, draw near, drink the blood for you outpoured. Christ our Redeemer, God's eternal Son, as by his cross and blood the victory won, he spent his life for greatest and for least, praise Christ the Paschal Victim, Christ the Feast. Draw near, draw near, take the body of our Lord. Draw near, draw near, drink the blood for you outpour. Let us approach with faithful hearts sincere and claim the promise of salvation here. Christ rules our hearts and all his saints' defense. He gives his believers life that never ends. Draw near, draw Take the body of your Lord. Draw near, draw near, drink the blood for you outpoured. <clears throat> With heavenly bread, Christ makes the hungry whole. His living water fills the thirsting soul. Alpha Omega, unto whom shall bow all nations of the earth be with us now? Draw near, draw near, take the body. Draw near and take the body of the Lord and drink with faith the blood for you outpoured. Saved by Christ's body and his holy blood, with souls refreshed we give our thanks to God. Draw Christ, our Redeemer, God's eternal Son, has by his cross and blood the victory won. He spent his life for greatest and for least. Praise Christ the Paschal Victim, Christ the Priest. Draw near, draw near. Take the 
Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you have given in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. We also have uh, tonight one of our finance council members, Ron, is going to speak to us about our annual financial statement and giving. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Good evening. I'm Ron Kapischke. I'm a member of the finance committee here at St. John Vianney. Today, I'm happy to report that St. John Vianney is in solid financial position. It was a challenging financial year due to COVID, but we were able to utilize programs that were available to us as an employer and as a school to fill that void and have a positive year. We completed an LED lighting upgrade in the school, which will provide us 
long-term energy savings and improved lighting for the students. This was made possible by the generous donation of the Knights of Columbus. Financial support, however, was down last year due to church attendance restrictions in place due to COVID. If not for those employer programs and some bequests, we would have had a $151,000 loss for the year. As of today, we are behind budget and not yet back to pre-COVID support from our parishioners. The major expense in our budget each year is staffing, and we have been able to maintain our staff in spite of the labor shortages in our community. We have benefited from many of our members having their church support payments automatically made using ACH. A few items about ACH. Church support payments can be withdrawn from your account weekly or monthly basis, whichever works best for your budget. Payments can be designated to various funds, for example, adult support, hope shop, or capital improvements. Changes can be made with a simple call to the parish office. ACH payments are safe and secure, and this service is provided to us by our bank at no cost to either the church or you as a parishioner. We do ask that you review your monthly donation and increasing your donation if possible. We will be available in the gathering space after the Mass to answer any questions to set up ACH payments or adjust your current ACH payments. Thank you for your continued financial support. Thank you, Ron. A couple other announcements here. The Baby Bottle Campaign continues through October to help organizations who work with men and women facing an unplanned pregnancy. Donation boxes are available in the gathering space. A reminder that if you took one of the boxes of joy to give a gift to a, a gift to a child for Christmas, they're due back to the church by October 24th, next Sunday. There's a box by the youth table in the gathering space to collect them. The Knights of Columbus are having a fish dinner boil fundraiser, all you can eat this Friday at the Knights of Columbus Hall. Serving time is from 5 to 7.30 p.m. $15 donation is suggested. This Thursday at 10.30, we have the funeral mass for Ray Rosa here at St. John Vianney. Please pray for him. The visitation is Wednesday from 4 to 7 at Lakeview Fu Funeral Home. Next weekend is World Mission Sunday. We will have a collection for the Society for the Propagation of the Faith. This collection gathers support for the pastoral and evangelizing programs and needs of more than 1,150 mission dioceses around the world. You have an envelope in your packets for this collection. You uh, may have noticed we have some new bells, thanks to a donor, Sam. Give them a nice, strong ring. Go ahead and shake them. There we go. Very good. And they get louder than that, but uh, so... Uh, we thank uh, um, Julie Hill for donating them, um, and so we have ma bells for Mass. We didn't train Sam on the new bells, we just got them this week, so we'll be training the servers on ringing them, but we th we're glad to have uh, a nice set of bells for Mass. And then Vincent and Ann Anna Landsteiner are celebrating their 70th anniversary. We congratulate them again. And there's a dance at the Knights of Columbus Hall tonight at 8 p.m., Everyone is invited to help them celebrate tonight, 8 p.m. at the Knights of Columbus Hall. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.